Hello and welcome. Logic 10.5 is here. There's some cool and amazing updates. Let's look at one of the highlights. I'm Darren. Hit that like and subscribe button. I'd be hugely grateful. There's more videos to come from me on these updates and enjoy using the quick sampler and 10.5. All right, here it is. So let's talk about the quick sampler and how you can use it and basically what it is. So it lets you create sampler instruments from a single audio file. That audio file you can then chop up and manipulate in various different ways. And you also have various different sampler modes. So you've got classic, one shot, slice, and recorder. Recorder even lets you record directly into the sampler. So let's say you're working on a track and you quickly want to record a guitar note or you want to do a clap or record something specific or you've got something you want to play, you can record it directly in. You set up your input and you can see there my input is now coming in and when I hit record I can actually record a sample. This is brilliant because what it means is that you no longer have to set a audio track up, record something, chop it up, you can record it straight into the sampler and away you go. Okay so let's look at how you can get sound into the quick sampler and it couldn't be easier. There's a drop down menu here where you can click on load audio file and then navigate and open the audio sample that you want. I'll talk about this original and optimized in a second. The other way you can do it is to simply get the finder up, navigate to an audio file and drag it onto the display area. Or you can take from the loops library uh, a loop, an audio loop, and you can again drag it straight into the display area. If you don't have an instrument loaded up, you can actually go to the header and now you can opt to create a quick sampler, drum machine designer or alchemy, additive granular and spectral, which is brilliant. The other thing that you can do is if you have an audio file in the arrange page already, you can drag that audio file into the quick sampler display area and then you're able to select whether you want original which is using the original tuning loudness and looping. Now optimize will look at the tuning, it will look at the loudness, it will search for the loop points to, to snip and cut and it also will remove silence. So it basically optimizes the loop specifically for the purpose of sampling. The other thing that you can do is you can drag any audio region into the header and you can create a quick sampler drum machine or alchemy instrument straight from the arrange page. I think that's really cool. It saves a lot of time and really will speed up the process of production. Okay, so let's start off by looking at some of the modes, classic one shot slice. And I'm going to just simply drag in a loop from Apple Loops on optimize. So it optimizes pitch and loudness and all of that stuff. Classic will actually just allow you to play the whole loop and then when I let go it stops playing. In one shot, the classic thing for one shot is that you press the key and it will play all the way through until the end of the sample or wherever you set the end of the sample to be. A slice divides it up into different slices. So let's start off with classic and I'm going to show you a couple of things that I think are quite important. First of all is the root key. Uh, now this root key will show you where the actual sample is rooted to. So if I play C2, you can see that the, no the sample plays as it would normally. And then an octave up, it will be twice as fast. Octave down, it will be twice as slow. What's cool in the piano roll is you can see the root key is marked off here. That's a really great feature because it allows you to always remember where the root key is and where you set the root key up to. As I play this, you've got different playback options. So I could play it in reverse or I could use the loop function that would loop it from the beginning or loop it from the end or loop it backwards and forwards. And we'll look at that in a second. Now what's great about this is you get flex in there as well. So when I play an octave up, it doubles the speed. But if I switch flex on and switch on follow tempo, 
when I go up an octave, it stays in time relative to the tempo that you have set up in your project, which is really cool. But what's excellent about this is you can change the speed. So at C2, I can pitch this down, but it still stays in tempo with your project. So that's this, this kind of main options menu here. Now to look at the loop function, rather than play the whole thing, what I'm gonna do is grab this sample end handle and bring it back in like this. And you can see now that it's continually looping forward to the end point. If I put it in reverse, it goes to the end and then continually loops in reverse. Alternate will loop backwards and forwards. That's really cool. And no loop, of course, will just play the sample once. Now there's some other really interesting features with this. You've got your start and end handles, so I can bring these forward here, but you also have a loop handle as well. So if I wanted to loop on just one portion of the audio file, I could do that. So here's our loop area, and this is the start and end points of the loop. I could bring this backwards, which is excellent really useful feature. Now what I can also do, you see you have these handles here, I can actually set up a fade in and also fade out. You won't hear the fade out because it's just on the loop. I could go right back to the beginning and let's see. Now the other thing that you can do, if I set this loop just slightly longer, you also have crossover points as well. Crossover fade length. So this will is useful for stopping the clip, but you can actually use it creatively as well. So you see there that the actual sample changes based on the crossfade length. The main reason for using crossfade is to get rid of any clicks and pops, but you can also use it creatively as well. So straight away I've got a more interesting sound and I've done nothing other than change a few of these different parameters. In one shot you don't get the loop option, you only have the start and end points because of course it's just a one shot. But you can see there I've got a clip so what I can do is I can put a fade on the end and I can eliminate that clip. What I love about this is the fact that the waveform updates. So let's just quickly go back to classic mode and I want to show you a couple of things here. So where you have your different start and end points and parameters, you can see that they come up beneath the display area and you can actually manipulate and change these by sliding them up and down. For me personally, I'm not sure how often I will use these. Uh, maybe if I want to fine tune something, but most of the time I think I'm just going to click and grab the handles. So if you want to display the parameter information for the handles, all you do is you hover over it and you can see that you've got sample start, end, length and so on and so forth. But if I want to actually fine tune these, I can't actually click on it. it as soon as I move away, it comes off. So the way you, you get it to stay on screen is you simply click on the handle and you can see here now I can actually uh, click those and they move. If I want to remove that, deselect it, you just click the cross. Now to get the loop handles to stay on the screen, what I've found you have to do is first click the sample start and end points or this one and then select the loop handles and you can get this information up here and then you click cross to deselect it. The other thing that you can do is if you click in the actual loop area, you can move it backwards and forwards. And if you click Alt and hold the handle, you can actually move the entire loop area that you've selected 
backwards and forwards. So I think that's a really useful feature. So you just click and hold for the loop and for the actual start and end points, you hold Alt and then drag backwards and forwards. So let's look at how powerful this is in terms of creating new sounds just from some samples that you drag in, even from the loop library. Without even looking at modulation or any enveloping or anything like that, how can you actually change the sound and manipulate the sound just from the start and end point and loop regions and using flex and the playback options. I've just dragged in some beats and a bass line from Apple Loops, nothing special, and I've put a chord in because we're going to look at this as in polyphonic mode rather than just playing the individual sample. So here's the sample originally. Okay, I've got follow tempo on, so even if I play higher notes, it will always play it back at the correct speed. I'm going to halve this and I've got my chords and it sounds like this. Now that's not bad, but what if we just simply reverse this? And that sounds pretty cool. Maybe you'd have to tweak the ending. I could even go further. Let's just take the first, the very first note and see what happens. And I'm going to bring the crossfade back in the loop. Let's just bring this to here. Add some reverb. And of course, obviously, you're going to get a brand new sound. Or with reverse. Okay, so what we're going to do now is let's create some form of lead sound. I've actually duplicated the original chords because I liked both and want to use both together. So you get this nice big fat chord. Okay, so I've set the start and end points so that they're just on the first beat or the first note. The loop section, I've set this so that it starts at one, two, you see it's on a division here and this is also finishing on a division. Now that means when I hold the key down as it loops round, it will loop on the beat. Now you can hear there is a click there. So what I'm gonna do is use the crossfade length just to pull it back a little bit so we don't get the click. Now, another reason why I've set this here is because you'll notice that this uh, wave level is all the same pretty much all the way along so I get a nice sustaining sound. If I pulled it back too much I'm going to get too much volume from this so it might feel a little bit like the volume is coming up and down. Now if I bring the fade length further down uh, I can change the way it sustains. So I can create some quite interesting sounds with the music just by changing the fade length. So I get a nice lead sound. There's a couple of other things that I've added. I've added the fat effects, just a bit of distortion, taken some top end off and use the compressor. Of course, I could use the filter here, but I'm not going to touch upon that just yet. And there's a tiny bit of reverb. There is one thing I'm going to quickly show you here with the pitch, not that I'm touching on any of this yet, but you could actually add some glide. I'm just going to put this back to one so you can hear it clearly. So you get a nice glide or slight pitch bend. You can uh, just have it sort of dialed in subtly. So there you go, that's the first look at the quick sampler, just looking at the very basics 
of what this thing can do in terms of importing sounds and manipulating sounds by actually using the various handles. We've not even looked at the modulation, pitch, filter and amp section yet. We will do that next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and if you want to catch the next one, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. I'd be hugely grateful.